So, part two, um, I really want to get a shout out to this guy. Uh, he's one of the best video game vendors I think I've bought from. His prices are pretty cheap from what I've seen uh, on his website and stuff like that. You can find him on Facebook. I'll put a link to his Facebook page and his website, which he sells everything from the website, but it's good to be friends with him on fa or like him on Facebook because he gives you previews of what he's putting on his site, what he's putting on his eBay channel and stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure if you can get to him before that, uh, he'll sell it to you first and stuff. Or just, like, he'll link you to the website and he'll start something that way. Uh, he's, he's from North Carolina, somewhere up north. I forgot the town, but he is from North Carolina. He posts a lot of pictures on his Facebook of him every single cart and constantly buys. He personally cleans and just go. He like, they look, they look dirty and shitty and everything, and he takes them apart cleans them they look brand new when he puts them back together um his site is called game Wiz. uh really i would feel definitely very very confident buying from this guy his prices are you know decent i'm not saying just be like he's selling you know everything for five bucks but i found some rare things from him uh i've seen that he's found like dracula x for people and stuff uh, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna delve in. First game that I bought from him was this one, which I've been looking to for forever. King of Dragons for the Super Nintendo. I want this game so bad, and he's the one who came through for me, so, uh, I gotta appreciate that. And I've bought three games off of him so far, and they're, they look beautiful. Um, Conker's Bad Fur Day for N64. I got this off of him. And the last one I got is Mega Man 6 for the Nintendo. Um, all these games look look great. He's very, very fair on you know telling you the condition. I think on his website you can't see pictures of the games, but I, honestly, just send him a message saying, hey, can I get some photos? Um, you know, Tell him what kind of photos you want. He sent stuff directly to me, to my email. No problem. Um, he takes really good care of his stuff, cleans them up real nice. So... Game Wiz, look him up on Facebook, look him up, you know, he has his own, uh, just website. He has an eBay channel too, but I'm not sure if it's called Game Wiz or not. Maybe it is, but I'm, I can't remember. I'll try to find it and put that in there too. But, whoa! Well, looks like I another need, need another King of Dragons. But, if you're looking for some more rare, obscure stuff, definitely go at it. Some of this stuff I picked up back home around St. Louis area, and I don't know if I went over it or not. Uh, this one, Dinosaurs for Hire on Sega Genesis. Looks like shit. I think I might already went over this in one of my videos there. I couldn't remember, so I figured I'd just throw it in. Super R-Type for Super Nintendo. Got that uh, while I was in St. Louis. Another lot of games that I got on eBay. This guy... Some of these I haven't even opened, so that's how often I have it in making games, or making videos, rather. Bubble wrap! Yay! But, um, all these games, this guy, I would highly suggest, I can't remember his, his damn name on eBay, though. But, um, his games were in great condition at a damn fair price. I got Wise, Wonders from Wise 3 on Super Nintendo. This came in a lot. Uh, this game, I couldn't find forever, now it's got an affinity for me. Twisted Tales of Spike McFang and Lagoon. I bought all three of those games for, I think, $30. Um, and I think that was an offer I made him. But they're all in really, really clean shape, so it was great to get those. I got Run Saber for Super Nintendo. That was another game I picked up in uh, at home. Some other games I picked up at home that a friend of mine gave me. You might remember him from the video. He's going to be one of the guys, hopefully, help me out soon. Everybody back home is working on getting their own capturing footage and, you know, working out uh, how they're going to play, what they're going to do with editing. So hopefully we'll see more Clutch Lunch and Just Jared uh, pretty soon. But they're just getting stuff worked out. I'll try to keep content flowing for you guys for right now. But uh, Clutch made sure to just send me home from stuff that he didn't want anymore. Uh, WWF No Mercy and Kirby the Crystal Shards for N64. He gave me both of those. He just let me have them. 
which I was very thankful for. Uh, a game I picked up recently, I think before Christmas, at a local store was Shadowgate. I think this game's decently rare on the Nintendo. I haven't really looked it up, but it's got some awesome like cover art, so it was really cheap, like $6, so I was like, why the hell not? Uh, I went to Player's Choice with my girlfriend a little bit after Christmas just to go visit Myrtle Beach and everything. While I was there, I picked up two games, Dawn of Mana for $8. The cheapest I could find this game online was close to 20 so that was definitely a good, good buy. I don't think it has the guide, and... <laughs> my second turbo graphics game this one's actually in the box with the guide um keith courage and alpha zones i've actually looked up let's play footage of this game um it looks kind of hard and at times it looks kind of boring but i've looked at a lot of like top 10 lists or great games on turbo graphics and stuff like that um this game is on a lot of them so i'm really glad to pick this up because the parts where you get in like the mech suit look like a lot of fun so, I'm very, very happy to have that. Um, today, again, like I said, with the fucking play and trade, what the fuck happened? One, I went, and it was a goddamn pizza place, and the other one I went, and it was a... What the hell is it called? A Goodwill. So, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll go in Goodwill and see if I can find anything. And I did, I found Painkiller Hell Wars is an Xbox game. It's a first-person shooter. I know nothing about this game, but, the, like, the one lady is just like, is there anything else you want in here? It's an old one. So I was like, L let me look at that one. And she's like, it's $7. So I was like, okay. It is made by People Can Fly. They published this, or developed this game. So those are the guys you might know. Uh, they made Bulletstorm. The team was bought by Epic, and now they're making Gears of War Judgment. So, they're developing the story part of that game, overseen by Epic, and Epic's taking care of competitive multiplayer. Um, since they've had guys that have, you know, been doing that, uh, making Unreal, making the last three Gears games, they know kind of what they're doing with Gears multiplayer. So, uh, they left the multiplayer to Epic, and the single-player campaign is being overseen by Epic, but it's being developed by People Can Fly. So, they made Bulletstorm, which... I didn't like that game that much at all. I was always focused on, like, trying to score and less about shooting stuff. And I like adding the strategy stuff to the game, but you got to make it very adaptable because I was just getting shot because I'm just like, oh, let me go over here and line this up and fucking kick this guy and da-da-da-da-da. And it just got... It was, it was messed up. It, it was just... It, it broke up fluid of the game for me. Because I was like, oh, let me try to do this. And then I'd screw it up. And I'm like, god damn it. And then like, I'm getting shot because I was spending all this time trying to kick a dude into a spike and fucking shoot his balls off while he was like flying through the air and before I could. So, I mean, it was just like, I don't want to sound like a retard. Like, just give me a gun and let me shoot bad guys. I, I appreciate the effort, but it just wasn't for me. But Painkiller, I'm interested to delve into it. It looks pretty crazy. There's skeletons and minotaurs and priest-looking, like, monk guys. And you just got big-ass guns. And so he's throwing a hammer through a guy's chest. I don't know. It looks pretty neat. And the other one, uh, this game was on a friend of mine, Xander Scullion, was talking about this game. It's uh, SVC Chaos, SNK versus Capcom pretty sure he was talking about this game but you got like the snk characters versus capcom characters which is pretty awesome the game looks like it's graphically pretty sweet this game is in like crisp ass condition the box is beautiful the label's beautiful the disc and guide looks sweet but i don't know what it is with fucking goodwill have you ever heard of a goddamn sticker why do you got put permanent ink on the fucking game cases the good thing is I can just change out the box, and the labels will still be nice, but why the hell, like, put a goddamn price tag on it? Which I will say, the one up in Raleigh is better than the one down here, because the one down here puts the disc in a big CD case, and then writes the fucking price and inventory number on the fucking disc. 
what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, that is retarded. Nobody wants to buy DVDs, CDs, and video games that have a fucking permanent marker put on there by the person that's selling them. I can understand that some kid wrote it on there, like, his initials so they wouldn't get stolen, but not the goddamn retailer. It's stupid as shit. Quit doing that dumb shit. If you're... Never mind. It's fucking stupid, all right? All right, I did say something about my older brother giving me a lot of games. Um, what kind of sucks is he thinks he traded a lot of that shit in. He's like, I don't know, it was in the garage, and I think I traded it in. So a lot of the stuff that was mine, he gave me, and some of the stuff isn't mine, and he gave me too. Uh, I guess if he comes across anything else, he'll let me know and he give me more. But a lot of the stuff that he gave me, this was one of my games, Kingdom Hearts 2. Uh, this is what made me get into action RPGs. I watched a review of this game. I was just like, what the fuck? Cloud from Final Fantasy and Mickey Mouse. Like, what the hell is that? But I, the gameplay looked cool. Um, the graphics were amazing. The, the sound design is colorful and looked really nice. Um, I picked the game up. I really like this game. It's freaking cool. I wish they'd make a Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, I'd like to get into maybe one of the DS, the 3DS ones, or the, the, I don't think there's one on the Vita, but the PSP one, something like, this, this made me really, really fall in love with, like, JRPG, action RPG type style. Um, it's a lot of fun. I don't know if, like, if it's considered a good RPG, but I think the game's cool. Um, Zelda Twilight Princess on GameCube, um, I own this, he borrowed it, so... Can't wait to jump in. I never beat this game. Uh, a lot of people like or hate this game among Zelda fans. I really like it. I love the art style. Some people say it's too dark, too gritty. It looks more like first-person shooters, just a lot of browns and dark colors. Um, I still think the game's beautiful. I think Link, his his change in appearance was very needed at the time. Um, I'd like to see him visit it again uh, with that Wii U demo they gave with... Uh, just the Zelda thing where you could mess with the lighting and stuff like that. Uh, I like that art style, too. It pretty much looks like full HD Ocarina of Time, which I'm very, very happy with. I thought Wind Waker looked good. It's a pretty-looking game, but I'd like to see Zelda get more into this kind of art style. The stuff that they did with the Wii U demo was great. Um, Skyward Sword, I thought, was just not very appealing. It didn't do a good job of showing anything off. It was very bland. It was colorful, but like textures and stuff just didn't, they didn't pop. Like, um, if they would have made that game look more like Super Mario Galaxy, like, that's a very colorful game too, but it's very more, it looks more detailed and stuff. Uh, Skyward Sword to me just didn't look very, it, it just looked very bland, very colorful, but very bland. Um, it looked like uh, Easter Isle at Walmart to me. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, but this this art style to me was much appreciated. Minda annoys the living piss out of me even more than Navi. So the dogs are going nuts. But I I still like that game. I just never beat it. Mario Superstar Baseball. This is another game of mine. I love that game, even though that game is frustrating. Um, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time with Ocarina of Time Master Quest, the double set. It's just got a bunch of demo or... Uh, Mario Golf, Player's Choice Edition, Toadstool Tour. This is a game that I got for Christmas one time. Um, PlayStation 2, my mom bought it for me. And she's just like, the guy at the store said it was a good game. And I was like, I don't want some cheesy, stupid-looking anime game. And I think what sucks is I don't know where the guide is of this game. It's probably in my bedroom somewhere at my mom's house, buried under stuff. But um, this is the best mech game I've ever played in my entire life. Uh, Robotic All McDrive, rad. Uh, it's got the typical kind of just like still action text box there is a vo though which is good but it is a japanese game so it's kind of a cheesy voiceover um the gameplay in this game is cool you control your guy so you got to run and you get like a hover thing and like get on a building and then press like select and it zooms in to your robot and like you control your robot there's like the the hard setting on this game is insane because each 
eat, you gotta like push a button to move your leg and push another button to move your leg and push like to rotate. Um, it's very easier on easy. That's what I'd suggest if you play this game. I don't know what this game goes for. I highly suggest playing it though. There are times that are frustratingly hard. There's three different mechs to play in this game. Um, and I think three different characters you can play as too that each have like a different story. Um, two of the mechs have an alternate vehicle mode. Uh, one turns into a jet, one turns into a tank. But it's uh, developed by Square Enix. Uh, it's just a really cool game. Like I said, pretty cheesy characters, pretty cheesy voice acting. Um, Gameplay-wise, definitely sells it. Freaking awesome game. Like, I was just like, Mom, why the fuck did you buy me some Japanese robo game? Um, I gave it a chance, and it, it's, it's awesome. I imagine this game probably goes for a decent amount of money, because it is a good game. It's one of those Japanese games that, like, are expensive for some reason. But, I don't know. Play Robotic Almond Drive if you get the chance, though. Harvest Moon Save the Homeland, the very first Harvest Moon game I ever played. It got me hooked on the series. Um, don't leave your cows in the rain. And also I got Ratchet and Clank going to Commando. I think this is the second one in the series. This is my personal favorite game in the series. Um, I think it's great. The weapon's upgraded. You can get armor. So much more stuff than the first one. I know everybody talks about the third one. I did not like the third one that much. But Up Your Arsenal was freaking awesome these are like these ratchet and clank was a series my brother liked and stuff and i'm glad he let me take these um the other one ratchet deadlocked i know a lot of people don't like this one because this is more focused on co-op um and like if you, if you don't play co-op you get the two robots and stuff like that uh I, I really like this one um you know i don't really care what anybody else says ratchet deadlocked was really cool to me i really like this game and uh, it's a hell of a blast playing with my brother. I love, I love playing, you know, playing that game with my brother. Uh, last game. Where did she go? Uh, very, very happy to show off this next game. It was way on top of my collecting list. So I'm really fortunate to show this off. When I was a kid, I loved dinosaurs um, a lot. So this game, when I saw it, kind of uh, reminded me of that scene from Fantasia, which is one of my favorite movies growing up as a kid, where you saw, I can't remember the classical score it's set to, but it's like you kind of see the evolution of life on Earth and stuff. And that's pretty much what you play through, what I can tell from watching Let's Plays of this game. But that is uh, Evo, Search for Eden on the Super Nintendo. This is a very, very hard to find, very expensive game. I found a very kind person on uh, Nintendo Age Forum that was wanting to get some of his rare games off to good homes that he had played a lot. And he's just like, I don't see a reason of them just sitting on a shelf because I've played them so much. Um, I'd like to get them in a good home with someone who would appreciate them. Uh, he gave me a good deal on it. I still dropped a decent amount of coin, but nowhere near as much as eBay. Um, I'm very, very fortunate to have this. I've had it for a while. I was going to do it in a Christmas episode. I just never gotten around to doing it. But Evo Search for Eden is the, you know, the, the icing on the cake for this video. Very, very glad to have this game. Um, it looks great, and I can't wait to play it. I will definitely be doing some Let's Plays of this because it's super freaking cool, in my opinion. Uh, just the, the cover art alone with the dinosaurs and stuff on it. Uh, it really, really wins me over. But, this is a long-ass pickups video. And, you know, it's unfortunate I got fucked with the GameCube shit. But, I guess that's how, the, you know, the game chasers, you know, that's how game chasing go. You know, I guess I got caught slipping. They might call it slipping, I call it fucking skidding across the ground leaving a shit stain if you ask me but um got my wallet back i'm ready to make more content for you guys uh so keep it locked because i really want to keep making videos and i hope you guys enjoyed this one it was a long two-parter so see ya